welcome to First Taste TV. We are here in Green Bay, Wisconsin at the Wisconsin School Nutrition Association in front of a live studio audience. Check them out. <laughs> And what episode are we filming today? We are filming Fork Farms. Oh, home of the Flex Farms? That's right. The most efficient vertical garden. Yes, that's right. And we are super excited to see all they have to offer. They are serving tons of amazing school districts across the country, and I can't wait to learn more about them. Southern Wisconsin. Southern Wisconsin. And I think we have someone here from Wisconsin that's going to be on stage that uses Flex Farms. What state are we in again? Wisconsin. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to go hang out with my people real quick. You can just chill here, and we'll start the episode in a little what? bit. What? I'm going to go out there. You're going to be here. Wait, we, we, we have an episode to film. Yeah, it'll be fine though. Just hang on a bit. <sighs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Come God. on, we have to start Always the show. Always rushing me. All right, let's do this. So who's our first guest? Our first guest is Alex Tyke, president of Fork Farms. Well, let's bring him on. Let's Absolutely. go. Absolutely. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm going to have you stand right here in the middle. How about oh, okay. that? Okay. Cool. Hey Alex, how are you today? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, we are so extraordinarily happy to have you here today to learn more about these incredible units. But before we learn more about those, I want to know more about Alex and the company. Like, what is your why? How did this get started? Yeah, well, believe it or not, before all this, I was an opera singer. I told you. She didn't believe me. I mean, give me a little something. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that there's a continuity because, you know, you sing to the plants, they grow faster, and look at how beautiful they are, right? So we were, we're doing something right. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, you know, the story was is I moved out to New York City, um, which you're originally from. Yes, I, I am. I am. Pretty cool. And uh, I had a really unique opportunity. I met a guy who was doing something that I thought was crazy at the time. He was growing food on a rooftop in the middle of Brooklyn. And I'd never heard of this before, and I thought, that's, that's amazing. I got to go see it. What, so, what kind of food was it? Everything. They were growing uh, uh, all sorts of greens. They're like uh, the beautiful rainbow chards everywhere, little lemon cucumbers. They had squash growing right in the middle of Bushwick, Brooklyn. That was a crazy, crazy. thing. Crazy. Yeah. 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 And, and it was a beautiful thing. They were, uh, they were feeding all of the community. They had uh, all the volunteers that were there running it. They got to eat from it, and then all the extra food, which was quite a bit, they were bringing down to the food pantry that was on the first floor of the same building. And I thought, what an incredible little ecosystem right in the middle of, you know, dingy, dark Brooklyn. It was like an oasis. What are some of the benefits to someone like me using this product? I think there's a lot. I mean, the first thing is that, you know, this system is designed to really feed people. Um, the intention is to grow food at a volume that we can make a really significant nutritional impact. and really help with food security issues and really help with food supply chain issues, which there's a lot of right now. How'd you know? Yeah, we're, we're all <laughs> feeling it, I think. And food prices, um, in this unit, you can grow food for as little as a dollar per pound. A dollar? A dollar per pound. Amazing. Yeah, and it only takes about 30 minutes a week to operate. And so for your average person, it's not such a time sink that it's going to be overwhelming, but it's also going to be so impactful that you're almost going to become positively dependent on it in a way it's going to become this really important piece of your your own personal food system so you're telling me i don't have to play what's on the truck with this i definitely this not no, no you will know exactly how much you're going to get you'll know exactly when you're going to get it and you're going to have complete control over what you're growing now i heard i'm going to get 25 pounds of lettuce or more this. we had just last week a group get 36 pounds of bok choy out of one of these systems in 28 days. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yes, because supply chain is an issue. Um, is it just me or anyone here? No? Yeah. You, oh, everything's <laughs> fine in Wisconsin, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are a bunch of liars, Alex, and I think everybody <laughs> needs something like this where we can actually reap what we sow. Oh, nice. Nice. Good job. The, Good job. the other piece is, you know, for us, it's not just about the food. I think that that's a really important part, but everything that goes around the food is equally important. So when you think about in a classroom, the educational opportunity or at a food pantry, the, the feeding the hungry opportunity or the ability to grow and sell food or something like this. So we spend a lot of time building out really robust curriculum and all these resources that bring to life the really innate meaning and value 
that's something like this can have for each individual partner that we have. So you guys provide a product and you supply customer service after the fact? And yeah, you take yeah. Care of the, you, take, you take care of your customers? We view them as partners. We don't even call them customers. I we like think it. of this as uh, something that needs to be long lasting and has to be long term sustainable. And the only way to do that is to really uh, get to know them, really understand what they're trying to accomplish, and then wrap around as much love as you possibly can. Before you let him touch it, why don't you show us how it's done? Sure. All right. Um, so the first thing that you need to do when you're harvesting is uh, you need some harvesting supplies. So food safety is number one, right? So Absolutely. we've got a couple things here in our handy toolkit. And I'm sure as part of your training that you guys provide some sort of HACCP plan for us to add to that folder that no one reads. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, everybody reads. I'm so sorry. Should I take that again? <laughs> So it, so when uh, when you receive the flex farm, you get access to a whole suite of videos that are really short and sweet and really easy, and they walk you through all of this. So mm -hmm. it, uh, the the intention is like even if you don't read the manual, you still it's going to be really easy to understand. Excellent. It takes about five minutes to figure out. So I've already washed my hands, and obviously we uh, we need to put on our our handy dandy gloves here um, and harvesting plant is all you need is two fingers to do it two fingers two fingers okay can i actually help you with no, this no don't 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 let him do it get in here get in yes here. Get my, in guy. Here. Four four my guy four choices four yeah. choices <laughs> all right ma'am all right so we got our we got our handy dandy safety gloves and i'm just going to pick a random one kind of somewhere in here we got this beautiful red oak and you just, with two fingers, grab, and you pull this out. Aww. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. So this is about 28 days in the unit. And you see these, like, white, nice, beautiful roots. That's what you're looking for. Um, basically, that just means that the plant has had, like, optimal nutrition uptake. They've uh, had really good access to water the whole time. Uh, while the plants are in the system, once a week you're adding a little bit of water, you're adjusting your pH, and you're adding a little bit of nutrient. That whole process takes five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and then the actual harvest and planting process is the fun part. Usually the kids do that. Um, but that whole process can take about 45 minutes to an hour per system to harvest and replant. Now, as someone who actually Let's tried to turn. do hydroponics uh, <laughs> at there. my school district um, in something that I had the wood class make, um, the, my roots were green that's not the color we want them to be. So it's very nice to see that this is a very easy system. So uh, balancing that pH for the water, because the water is continuously cycling. I mean, I can hear the, ooh, that's Look at nice. that one. That's a big one. That is so a big we can one. hear the water continuously running up and down. Is that correct here? Yeah, that's right. So it's a recirculating hydroponic system is what it's called. And uh, it couldn't be more simple. There's a pump in one side and there's water at the bottom of both these tanks. The water just Eat pumps it. up. It feeds each one of these, we call them root chambers. Um, and the water just slowly trickles through, gravity feeds down, and never stops. Just keeps running 24-7. So, so real quick, how long did it take you to design all of this? There's a lot of technology built into the system right yeah, And here. as you know, I'm not an engineer by training at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it, took, it took longer than it probably should have, uh, and it took a lot of floods of the apartment floor, but uh, we got there. We yeah, got there you guys apparently so, made it. It's great. Yeah, yeah great. I would say that you know, I went through about 30, 35 prototypes, oh, wow. uh, yeah. all built out of wood and garbage bags, um, <laughs> and stum <laughs> basically stumbled into the core intellectual property in 2013, so almost 10 years ago now. Wow, that's impressive. Um, and the idea is so simple. It's when you put the right kind of light in the middle of the right kind of reflective surfaces, because you'll notice that these panels here are, are a white, a particular shade of white. Um, all the distances are very particular, and effectively what we're doing is we're recapturing the light energy. And in recapturing it, you don't need as much to grow the same amount of food. So I didn't figure out how to grow more food with the same amount of energy. I figured out how to grow the same amount of food with significantly less. And that's how you get the cost of the food so low and Genius. make it affordable. People. Absolutely genius. Yeah, and then we just listened. We just listened to our partners. Like, what do you love about it? What do you hate about it? And everything that you know, we learned, we just kept improving. We're still doing that to this day. Well, Alex, I definitely want to see this in a school district. Well, how about we bring a school district here? I spoke with Caitlin, who was a Flex Farm partner. You spoke to Caitlin. Who's yeah, I spoke Caitlin? To Caitlin? Oh, you're gonna know Caitlin. Caitlin's awesome. You know everybody. I did. Let's do it. Alex, welcome back to the stage. And everyone. Say hi to Caitlin from Ashwaubenon School District in Wisconsin. Thank you so 
so much for having me today. We are so excited to hear about everything that you guys have been doing in your school district, but Alex, remind us of why school districts should have one of your units. Yeah, absolutely. So they're used two main ways. One is either in the classroom or for a food service application. Um, classrooms, it's a really wide range. A lot of STEM, maker spaces, obviously, but we see it in almost every application. And the curriculum that comes with the Flex Farm really applies across the board. Um, so there's a lot of options there. But in food service, it gets particularly fun because then we're really making a significant impact feeding the kids. So, Caitlin, how long have you been a Flex Farm partner? Um, I believe we got our farms in March. So, uh, we have 10 farms in five schools. We have three at our high school, two at our middle school, two at two of our elementaries, and then we have a kindergarten and 4K school that has one as well. Wow. And what do the kids feel about it? How do the kids like it? The kids love it, um, especially the young elementary kids. The older kids are interested in learning how everything works, how the water runs through the pump and through the system. Um, but the little kids love to come see the lettuce blooming. Amazing. So as an operator, tell us a little bit about the day-to-day -day functions and how you've incorporated this into your program. It's super easy to use. I cannot stress that enough. Um, I wanted to make sure that if we got something into our school that grew fresh produce, that it would be easy for our staff to maintain. Um, and I think it takes them maybe five to 10 minutes a week to keep up with the maintenance of the farm. So at the beginning, did the staff give you a hard time about bringing in a new solution like this? Or were they like right on board, let's go, let's do it? <laughs> Well, it was interesting. I think we had a little bit of both. People that were super interested in farming were very excited about the unit. Um, and we did have some hesitation from staff for sure. But I think once they saw how easy it was to work with and how quickly the lettuce blooms, they were on board right away. So what are you guys growing in your flex farm? We are currently growing lettuce and basil. Okay. Basil. What are you doing with the basil? Um, we had an amazing chef who's actually going to be in our competition today who made a homemade pesto sauce out of it. Ooh, that sounds with good. With sunflower seeds, so there were no nuts. Amazing, what yeah. a great recipe. And uh, what's your email address to get that from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we can share it for sure if you want it. I'm you sure would. she'd be willing to share it. Love to see that. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be great. So what else can you tell us about, like what was your overall experience working with the kids and going through the app, like going through the service after it's been installed and set up, like how's the support been? How's the professional development going? The educational piece, all that stuff. Yeah, the support is amazing. Um, someone will literally get back to me within half an hour if I have a question. So they are really um, there for you to help you make sure that everything's growing correctly and working correctly. Um, the students love it. It's been really interesting to see them interact with it. I had a student at one of our elementary schools come up to me and she was so excited. She said, did you see we're growing lettuce? And I said, yep, because I was <laughs> standing right next to it. Yes, I saw it. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, it's so cool. I watched it from when it was just a little seed coming out, but I really hate lettuce. And I said, okay, well, do you want to try it since you've seen it growing? She was like, yep, I do. So I broke off a little piece, gave it to her. She put it in her mouth and spit it back in her hand. <laughs> and but said, at least she tried it. I still hate lettuce, but this is so cool. So, <laughs> um, we do see definitely an increase in participation on our salads when we serve it uh, to our students. But yeah, it's been really, really fun for the kids to watch. Well, that's a success story for sure. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can get kids to actually eat the dark greens, especially on their tray, mm -hmm. it's definitely a win for everyone. And you mentioned there was a chef that was here. We should probably get to bring in the chef on stage for a chef check. We that, that sounds like a very First Taste TV thing. That is a First Taste TV thing. So let's go ahead and let's move on with the chef check. Okay, welcome to a chef check. We have here Chef Noel, the executive sous chef at Lambeau Field here in Wisconsin. Thank you very much, Amanda. I appreciate that introduction. As the executive sous chef for the stadium, I oversee all aspects of culinary, sweets, catering, club, everything in the department and under the sun. You're a very busy man. Yes. In demand. Very in demand, well, yes. Let me ask you this, Chef. What was your favorite school lunch? My favorite school lunch would have to have been, and I'm a sucker for breakfast food, Ooh. I loved this little tiny, it was like a sausage McMuffin in a little tin. 
and it would have the tin foil wrapped over the top of it. And there's something about the cheese that was melted and stuck to the roof of the <laughs> tin foil that just like brings you back to your childhood. And I just remember as a kid, every single time that would be on the lunch menu, you'd get it up on the counter and I'd look at it and mom and dad would be like, all right, you get five lunches a month. So we'd go in and we'd cross it off. And every time it was like, Big I simple. would just look for it. Mm -hmm. That's but great. That's my personal favorite. <laughs> well, we are actually here to play a game, isn't that right, Chef? Yes, we are. And yeah, I'm going to grab it. this blindfold from down here if the I can find it. I got it, yes, because oh, yeah. the chef has put together some different ingredients and spices and just things yes. for you to try and figure out what they are. I'm ready for this. I was born ready for this. They do this on like Hell's Kitchen and Top Chef. Yes, they do. Yeah. Fantastic. You ready for this? Okay. Try not to mess up your hair. Oh, please don't. All right. <laughs> Is he cheating already? Don't be alarmed. I wasn't too mean. Please be alarmed. Okay, so Chef Noel, these are five of your favorite ingredients to work with, correct? Yes. Okay, and they were adamant that I was unable to cheat. Uh, so I have no idea what I'm walking into here. Can she taste this one? She, she can taste You can taste one. this one, all right. I would ta just take a little nibble on it. Where is it? Just it's right, right, it's right, right here in front of your, your mouth. It's in front of your mouth. Sriracha paste. No. Yes. <laughs> you want to try it again? Here, here's a spoon. I'll, I'll put the spoon in your hand. Give me your hand. Okay. Spoon. <laughs> Where's my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. This is work looks, guys. <laughs> Is it good? It's salty. It is. Anchovy paste? Nope. Dang. All right, one more guess. You're off to a great start, by the way. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. She doesn't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what Wait, you have in what, your what hand? What color Oop. is it? It's brown. Oh, uh, is it a stock? Is it a chicken stock? No. Duh. Sorry. It's it. close, though. I don't want to touch it. Is it a beef stock? No, it is not. Well, mm. um, all right, what am I going to use it in? Give me a dish. Um, soup. Mm. So I know that is very helpful. Oh, a fish stock. Fish base? Nope. Some sort of base? Kind of. Anybody out there know what it might be? Miso? Oh, is it a white miso? It is a brown miso. Oh, it's a brown miso. So you failed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, so moving on. This one, you can actually put your finger in the bowl. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not bad. Oh, is it? It's, I hope it's salt. Salt. Yes. Woo! You would have got that one wrong. My goodness. Well, I use salt. I love salt. Salt's my friend. All right, so this one, I'm going to be kind. You can touch this one. I'm not going to make you eat this. I, well, keep, I keep forgetting you can't see it. I'm sorry. What it's on your it? hand. It's on your hand. What does it feel like? It's sticky. Taste it. That's going to give it away. Butter. Yes. Is it on my nose? A little bit. Now it is. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get that for you. Wow. There you go. All right. Moving on. I still have butter on my hands. It'll help the next ingredient stick. There you stick. go. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yep. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Next ingredient. Keep forgetting she can't see. <laughs> Finger in the bowl. Right. Small granules. Pepper. Yes. Woo! All right. All right. Now How this many one. Do I need to win? This is the last one. You already lost. No. This is the very last one. <laughs> You are going to want to put your hand in this. You might want to get a handful of it, though, because it's going to be really difficult to guess what it is. Just don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> oh! It's, oh, it's an egg. <laughs> it's definitely an egg. It's definitely an egg. I can, feel the, I can feel the yolk. Yep. Yep. All right, she got it. So how did she do? Did I win? You won. Did I win? Yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so 
Shuffle, these are five of your favorite ingredients. Yes, they are. Um, what are some of the ways that you use this when you're cooking in Lambeau Field? Um, well, we use butter in everything. Right. <laughs> because butter makes everything taste better. Absolutely. That's my opinion. Uh, miso, for some that may not know what it is, uh, miso is a fermented soybean paste. Uh, I was close with the fish. You were, fish you were very, very and close. Anchovy, right? Yep. That's why I get you, sort of. Yeah. No yeah. half points here. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I like to use miso is kind of that umami flavor. Um, I add it to a lot of different things. Um, I know there's slight worries sometimes with allergens, so I am very cautious with how I use it. Uh -huh. um, going over to egg, eggs. It's just one of the most versatile ingredients, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You can feed yourself, you can feed others in many different ways, and you can cross-utilize it in different aspects. Uh, and flavor crystals, as I like to call them, salt. <laughs> uh, they, may, they just enhance flavor and everything. They make Shh, everything. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I can. So. <laughs> and so, we don't progress no, for that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, they just enhance the flavor and everything, and then pepper. Pepper just adds that depth of flavor and that little bit of spice. And I'm crazy about spice. I you love too. it. Awesome, Chef Noel. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And you've been watching Chef Check. We're back at Fort Farms, and Alex, you brought some friends, did you? Yes, we have uh, Josh Schmidt here from Shell Lake School District. Hey, Hi. Josh. So tell us about yourself, Josh. What do you do? Yeah, I am the food service director in Shell Lake, Wisconsin, between Eau Claire and Superior, in case you don't know where that is. And I've been there for nine years, and we've been running the Flex Farm operation since the fall. Wow. So okay. great to meet you, Josh. And what's your name? My name is Sue Melissa, and I work for Fork Farms. Uh, the last 20 years, I've been in school nutrition as a school food service director. So very near and dear to my heart, all of you. Amazing. So as someone who's done hydroponics and failed, that's right, I said it, Marlon. Thank you. Tell us how easy is this going to be to maintain and to gather safely so I can serve it in my kitchen? It's going to be pretty easy. Josh is going to take us through the maintenance and I'm going to take you through the HACCP procedure. Okay. And storing it for the best shelf life you've ever seen in greens. I'm excited to see it. All right, All right. Josh. Let's get to it. So we will stand over here. And Josh, you're the star. All right, so pro tip, put all of your items that Flex Farm sends you to do your weekly maintenance in a box or a bin. Super handy, all right? So what he's doing right now is he's opened up a little uh, porthole into the, the water reservoir at the bottom. And uh, there's about 10, 20 gallons of water at the bottom. And uh, what you need to do is just check the pH and the nutrients. So the, the plants, obviously, they need food to be able to grow. And hydroponics, there's no soil, so you put those nutrients right in the water. And then the plants can't eat the nutrients unless the pH is right. So just like checking your pool, it's a pretty fun process, you know, for the kids even. You, the colors change and magic happens. And, uh, and yeah, I'll let him kind of explain what he's doing here. Yeah, so this is a TDS meter. It'll check your nutrients for you. So turn it on, stick it in the water for 10 seconds. You know. Three, two, <laughs> one. Then you can push hold and it'll, tell, it'll give you a readout of what, your, what the nutrient level is in your flex farm. And then for the pH, we get to have a little fun. So we'll fill up our little beaker about halfway and give it three drops. One. Three. You did it! <laughs> We're smart up north. <laughs> Not saying anyone else isn't. <laughs> Give it a little shake to mix it up, and then you can hold it up to the light and compare what the pH level is with either on the bottle, there's levels, or you can get a card. You want it to be about a six, six and a half, so you would hold it up to the sunlight, look at it. We're a little high on pH right now. It's about at eight, eight and a half. So we're going to add some pH down. With supervision, we've had kindergartners do this. Oh, wow. Yep. That's impressive. I'm sure With they, supervision. I'm yep. sure they love every second of that, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and that whole process, you only need to do once, twice a week, making sure that there's enough water so the tanks are half full, so that there's the, 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 there's pump running in there. It likes to pump the water, mm -hmm. feed it some water, and then the plants can continually stay hydrated as well. 
And that's all you need to do weekly. Um, every other week, there's holes for the water to run through. So you can turn the spigot off in the back or just unplug the pump simply. And do we have it in here? We have a little brush, a really neat tiny brush. Not in there, but it's, it's a really tiny brush that fits these holes exactly. And you just kind of floss the hole so that if there's any junk that might get circulated through, it doesn't get stuck. If it does, you can kind of see the plants are asking for water. They're visually telling you you need some water. So you can just, that's an that's a emergency signal, clean me. And then you can clean it out and do that every couple of weeks and make sure it's flowing nice. So the plants talk to you, Josh. Oh, yeah. Very good. And you talk back to them. <laughs> because you love In nice plants. ways. You got to talk nice to the plants. <laughs> well, great. So thank you so much for showing that. So I think now we should probably go check out all the, the fun HACCP stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. All right. All right. Thank so, you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. All right, Sue. So we have these incredible units. We've planted them. Mm -hmm. We have our water, which is giving nutrients and it's pH balanced. So now I want to actually eat them. I want to take these amazing dark greens and actually put them on a tray for our students to consume. What is the safest way to do that? Okay. You're observing all your HACCP procedures, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, we can help you with that. We have models for doing that at Fork Farm. So we've put that together for our partners to help them apply it in their particular situation. So that's very helpful. So we're going to, of course, have a hair restraint on when we're doing this, mm -hmm. but I do not. And we're going to glove up. And the one thing that was really exciting to me when we started fork farming with fork farms is the fact that the hydroponic greens last so long. They oh. have an incredible shelf life. Uh, you know, four weeks, five weeks pushing it. Chef Noel can attest to that. Why, he, why he is thought, that though? He thought I was kidding and um, we're not kidding. Why is that? Yeah. Because they're hyper local and we're harvesting them and we're walking them several feet to our cooler or, mm. or our line. Um, so they're not going in a truck. They're not and traveling on the road. They're not in the produce back office Correct. to get put on a shelf. Correct and then waiting for me to come and put it in my shopping basket. You're right, you're absolutely right. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how we would uh, take what we've already harvested here. And um, all right, you ready? You might have a couple drips. Isn't it just like a bouquet, it isn't is it? It is like it's a beautiful. bouquet. I feel very bridal. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a whopper, as we say in Wisconsin. This is a doozy of a head of lettuce here, right? That's the one that I picked earlier. Yes, oh, that out oh, well there. done, Marlon, <laughs> yeah, well done. That was all me. So once you take it out of the flex farm and they come out very easily, and we do have kids that do this all the time, um, you just take a, take a look at the head of lettuce. And I want you to think about lettuce that you may get in from a local farmer, we love our farmers, or things that you get in from your produce vendor, right? And we're gonna trim off a little bit of the bad leaves, okay? One, one slightly hmm. not so perfect leaf on this entire head. And then I'm going to just, you know, give it the old crackaroo. Woo! All right. And then we are going to toss this mm. and put this in for storage. All right. I want to talk to you a little bit about storage too. So this has been har previously harvested and this is beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Mm, yeah. Look nice. at the different varieties in here. So when we started flex farming, we just we tried many different ways for storing the greens. The best way to do it is to have a little layer of paper towel and the enemy of any fresh green is moisture. OK, so you're thinking, oh, my gosh, it's growing in water. Of course, it's growing in water, but just the roots are in the water. So as soon as moisture hits the top of it, the clock starts ticking on your shelf life. Right. So we're going to take it and we're going to harvest it and we're going to put it in a single layer in this wonderful bin. And then big thing that we like to do is just to keep that moisture down, you take your paper towel or your brown paper towel, whatever you may have in your, in your kitchen, and you layer that on top, and then you put another layer on it. It responds really well to a little bit of pressure. It doesn't cave, it doesn't crush, it doesn't degrade. Of course, you're gonna date mark it, right? Mm -hmm. Put it in your cooler, and it's gonna be there for you for four weeks, fresh as it was the day that you harvested four it. Four weeks, Chef no, really? He is it's, nodding his head. It's been confirmed. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. All right. And that that's uh, all we have for storing it. That's it. That's it. Fairly that simple. Is it. 
So Sue and Alex, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you for sharing how easy it is to set up Harvest and share your, your, your solution with school districts and people all across the world. And I am really excited to play a game. But before we do that, how can people get a hold of you if they want to get a Flex Farm and learn more about you? Forkfarms.com and someone answers the phone and we will get back to you very shortly and help you with anything that you may need. And you guys are on Facebook and Instagram and we all are. the socials, We're right? We are. We're shouting it out. We're shouting it loud and proud. <laughs> all right. Well, you guys heard it. Check them out on the, on the internet and on social media. And let's go ahead. Let's dive into this game, which is a cooking competition. So we are here at a brand new segment of First Taste TV called You've Been Schooled. First time ever in front of our live studio audience, we will have these teens competing to put together a reimbursable meal on these school lunch plates. And when can we get started? Um, well, let's introduce our teams first. That's shall a good we? idea. All right, our first team is Chef Noel, who we just saw we on did First Taste TV. Noel. Wave to the crowd, Chef Noel. And we. And then with Chef Noel, we have our audience participant, Sue Dion, who we just plucked out from Monona Grove School District. <laughs> All right, and on team two, we have Lois Ludwig from Ashwabanon, and with her is Christopher, one of our incoming freshmen. <laughs> Chef Anthony with Affinity Group, and he is accompanied by Stephanie Sheely from Holman School District. So are you guys ready to get this started? All right, let's start cooking. Right. When? Now. Now? Now. That means now, right now. go! <laughs> okay, let's go over the rules. Each team will have 25 minutes to create an approved school meal using a variety of items from the pantry and the Flex Farm harvested produce. Each team must include at least three to five of the following items. Protein, grain, fruit, vegetable, and milk. You have to have fruit or vegetables as one of those items. In presentation, it matters. Each team will get a school lunch tray and items needed to complete a full meal presentation. And finally, the final meal will be reviewed by a panel of impartial judges to determine our first ever winner of You've Been Schooled on First Taste TV. Spicy chicken, mango, slaw, and taco. I love it. I love it. We have a Asian-inspired chicken oh, and pasta. We are doing a Mexican street corn. Okay. Um, we also yeah, are doing yeah. a chicken oh, burrito what? and a side of fruit, some mango salsa, and some milk. All right, so you have about 15 minutes left.
Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Good job, guys. Marlon, we've got some great dishes to try. We're going to welcome up our judges, but we're just going to take a short break, and then they'll join us to judge these incredible plates. Glad I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. All right, judges, let's go. All right, so all the food has been prepared. There's some delicious dishes back there, but we have three amazing judges to come in to judge them. So let's start with Irene. Let's get a quick intro. I'm Irene Polish from Columbus School District. Jesse Bender, Food Service Director, Columbus School District. Michelle Sieg, Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools. All right, so let's go ahead and let's bring out team one. All right, chefs, what do we have here? So what we have here is a chicken burrito, or we have two chicken burritos. Uh, it's breaded and spicy chicken with mango, cucumber, and I actually use the stems from broccoli as kind of a filler, just oh. to kind of fill it up a little bit. Uh, on the side, we have a corn salsa that I actually took regular salsa and I folded it in with some corn and some onion, and then we kind of tore up some basil over the top of that. A uh, little bit of chips on the top of it. Just, you know, you gotta have that little serving vessel that you get to drive right into your mouth. Uh, and then a salad on the side of it. Uh, it's a mixed green, or I should say a regular green salad with chopped pineapple, and it's uh, avocado guacamole vinaigrette with cherry tomatoes. And then uh, as my fruit portion, I chopped up watermelon and I sprinkled chili powder and a little bit of cumin powder over the top of it just to tie in that little bit of Latin American influence. And then, of course, milk on the side. to what have you guys prepared for us? It looks delicious. Uh, most school kids love pasta. We did an Asian inspired pasta with chicken. We also sauteed a lot of the fresh herbs and veggies that were available and included those in there. A um, little bit of hint of lime in there that you'll feel, a little bit of the basil. Um, we also made a fresh fruit salsa. So that's pineapple, strawberry, and papaya. Ooh. We added a little bit of basil to that, hit that with a little lime also. And then we did a garden salad with the fresh tomatoes, um, the variety of beautiful lettuce we had available, cucumber, and we kind of come up with our own little Asian-inspired uh, dressing to go on top of that. All right, so we saw the dishes from Team 1 and Team 2. Let's bring out Team 3. So we did a kind of a Latin thing. Um, we did some burrito, we did a chicken burrito. We added some tomatoes, some cilantro to it. We added the Lari's uh, cumin chili um, uh, garlic seasoning to it. And then I folded in some cheddar cheese, uh, shredded cheddar. I also made a Mexican um, uh, street corn and um, I folded in some um, shredded cheddar. I also put some of that Lari seasoning as well. Really good flavors, um, uh, very well balanced. And then also we added some cilantro to it as well. Um, then we have some guacamole on the side with a mango salsa. You can put some lime on it, squeeze some lime on it. And the, the mango salsa accompanies that burrito very well. Um, and then we had some mixed fruit. Team three, thank you so much for your dish. We're gonna give the judges some time to deliberate and then we're gonna announce a winner. It's gonna be a hard call, you guys. I do not envy your positions. <laughs> All right, it is time. Let's get a winner. So judges, give us all the info 
What was the best fish and why? We compared all three of them. We said all of them had a great balance between the acid, the savory, the sweet, the spicy, the sour. So it was really challenging, but there was one that just was a little bit more overall on all the components, and that would be Chef Anthony and Steph. So, the both of you are our first place winners, and we have these amazing trophies for you. There you go. Thank you so much Thank for participating. Much. I can't wait to taste crying. your dish. <laughs> Would you like to say anything? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I couldn't have had a better partner. My <laughs> You guys are amazing. It was a it was a pleasure working with all of you. Thank you so much. It this was means a lot. So you guys may have won. You've been schooled today, but really we're all winners, and I have medals for everybody else too. So thank you so much <laughs> thank for you. participating, Christopher. Thank you for the dad jokes. <laughs> this is the future of food service right here. Take a bow. Take a bow. Team one. Great job, thank you guys so much for participating. And our judges. Round, round of applause for the judges. Thank you. Job, We're all winners. We got yeah, some right. the judges. We did it. Thank you. Well, congratulations, thank you. Chef Anthony. Thank Thanks to Wisconsin for being a phenomenal audience with us today. And we want to thank all of our sponsors, especially National Food Group. Titan, a link solution, and of course, Fork Farms. You've been watching First Taste TV.